So I'm setting my telescope up. We're going to go and have a look at the nearly full moon and Mars. Now, it's a beautifully cold, clear night. And if I don't do anything about it, if I don't take steps to prevent this, I'm going to get dew forming on the optics. And that means that I won't be able to see anything through the, through the telescope. The camera won't pick anything up. I won't see anything through the eyepiece. And it's simply because that as the as the air fo air temperature falls, as night falls, the air simply can't hold as much water vapour. Now at the same time, your optics are cooling, they're radiating away to the cold of deep space. And inevitably, unless we do something about it, that's going to lead to the formation of dew on your optical surface. And even worse, if it's below freezing, you're then going to get frost, you're then going to get ice forming on your optical surfaces and you simply won't see a thing. You won't see anything through your eyepiece and certainly the camera won't see anything. So we're going to need some way to shield our optics to stop them radiating away from the cold at deep space. So I have bought a yoga mat. Uh, obviously with a man of my stature, yoga is not the optimum sport for me. So get these, they're quite cheap, 10 quid. Um, so yeah, so get yourself a yoga mat. We're also going to use Velcro so that we can then whoop, we're also going to use some Velcro so that we can stick them down. We need a pair of scissors to cut it. So the simple rule of thumb is to have your dew shield at length about one and a half to two, twice the aperture of your telescope. So I'm going to go and open up the yoga mat, we'll cut it to size, we'll put the Velcro on and then we'll see how it fits. So as you can see on the refractor, we've got a dew shield now and a longer dew shield here over the objective lens and then we've got two on the go the other way the red dot finder and the 6x30 finder so this is going to keep that warmth that retain that warmth in the optics and it also reduces that radiative effect blocks off the radi radiation out to the cold of deep space so we should all be set for a clear night now i had one problem with the c11 in that the dew shield was too floppy it wasn't rigid enough to maintain its shape over that large circumference it's just not going to work. So what I've done is I've gone to Sports Direct and bought a camping mat. Same silver foil. Oop, completely disappeared there. See the camera trying to compensate. So I bought a silver foil camping mat. So I've cut three pieces of Velcro. You've got the, the hooks and the furry side. So what I'm going to do now, I've got the dew shield inside, I've wrapped the silver foil blanket around it, silver foil camping mat. What I'm going to do now is just stick these on. About there. There we are, one longer dew shield. So what I've done is I've wrapped the silver foiled camping mat around the dew shield of the C11. So now in effect, this is an insulated uh, dew shield. So uh, that's ready to go on as well. So let's go and have a look at that. So there we go, we've got dew shields on the telescope, both telescopes, plus the finders. So it's looking like it's going to be a clear night tonight, the moon's just rising over there. So uh, yeah, with these on and the dew heaters, we should have no problems with dew tonight. So we'll set up for a night of observing and we'll see how we get on. So what I'll do as well is before we start observing, I'm just going to show you my dew controllers and the dew heaters. And what these do is they just provide a little trickle of electrical warmth. They're literally just heaters, electrical heaters wrapped around the objective lens, the eyepiece, the finder scope, whatever you're using. And they just provide just a few watts of power and that's just enough to keep your optics just above the dew point, stop that dew forming. So the downside of this that is that you need electrical power, you need some way to, to power them, be it a battery or be it mains. So what I'll do at the end of this, I'll show you the way that I use to keep my camera free of dew when I'm away from a power supply. So this is the dew controller. I don't know why they call it a dew controller because of course it controls the heaters, not the dew. But you can see here, I've got four channels. I've got four heaters plugged in 
and that's for the Celestron C11 and the IP Send, and then obviously the same again on the refractor on the Williams on the William Optics refractor. And so because the C11's got that big corrector plate at the front, I do tend to keep that on maximum. And then when I'm setting up, I'll come out here, I'll switch this all on, and I'll switch them all to maximum. So all of them, I turn right up, so they're as hot as they can be. And then when I'm setting up, I can then, when I'm ready to observe, I then turn them down to about half, so it's got time to warm up. And so it's the same again at the IP7, that's the C11 on the flip mirror, which I use for my planetary imaging. And there it is again on the refractor, the refractor, sorry, for visual observing. So as you can see now, all the dust caps have got little luminous tapes on, so I can see them in the dark. I put luminous tape on the tripod legs. Uh, this everywhere now, and it's really weird because when you turn all the lights off and it's dark, all you can see is little dust caps glowing in the dark. So we've had a look at Moon, we're having a look at Mars. And we haven't yet been, been due doubt. So unfortunately we've, we've just clouded out. We've had about, I don't know, an hour or so of observing, so not a particularly long time, but what I'm going to do is put the telescope back into the home position and I'll take the camera and we'll just have a check of the optics, see if we've dewed over, see if we've had any dew from the, with the new dew shields on. So that's, and I'm going to tell the hibernate, hibernate at the home position. Whatever I do whenever the telescope's slewing is do give it a quick nervous check make sure none of the cables are snagging. So I'll do that now while we go to the home. And I always forget to unplug the camera and the laptop. So you show it off. So there's the refractor, that's looking pretty good, pretty clear. One red dot finder. One six by thirty finder that looks absolutely filthy, but apart from that, it's not looking good. Let's just check the focus. There we go. And one six by thirty finder that's pretty dirty, but free. And one C11 with a huge, huge corrector plate that normally fogs over. That is not looking too bad. So it's only an hour and a bit, um, so not really enough to be conclusive, but that's a promising start. So surprisingly easy to make. You just need a pair of scissors, cut the cut the dew shield to size, allow a little bit of overlap so that you can get wrap it around and then Velcro over the top. And that's all there is to it. So I'm getting ready to observe the night sky and I haven't got any electrical power. This is what you need to do. Grab these, these little chemical hand warmery thingy bobs. And then Nick, your daughter's hair scrunchy. Put that on top of there. And there you have it, you've got about an hour of heating, about an hour of warmth, and that'll be enough to keep dew off your camera lens when you're outside in the field.